Well, hello adventurers. Today, the T7 gets new forks. Well, not new forks, new internals. So uh, let me show you what's going on here. So I've pulled the forks out off the bike and here's my attractive suspension. It comes in the box, it comes with a little manual and a tool, some oil, some springs and the cartridges. And uh, for those of you with keen eyes, you go, what, 15 weight, why such heavy fork oil? Well, that's because these are closed cartridges, right? So all the oil and uh, gas is in these cartridges already. And this oil just sits on the outside and just lubricates, you know, all your seals and uh, everything. So yeah, heavy oil. So uh, to, to do this job pr properly, um, you really need something to hold uh, the forks. So you can buy something expensive probably, or you can just make up something like this. These are uh, 55 mil diameter. So I've cut a 54 mil hole in uh, this block of timber uh, with a vise, bolted the vise to the bench, and a fork leg will sit in here, as you will see. So the first thing we need to do is we, we pull out this little rubber bung, which is easy, no explanation needed. Then we need to undo uh, this, or loosen it, which is a 14 mil um, hex, and it is tight, so, I've decided to drill a hole in my bench. Um, this is a hole big enough for the axle. And this is a 10 mil hole. Let's see how that works. So what we've done is threaded the axle up uh, through the hole and just dropped a 10 mil bolt in there with a bit of a packer. We'll see if that works. Uh, the next thing we need to do there is uh, hold the fork and remove our cap. Now we're going to take this cap off. Look at our 17. Loosen that nut, which is which way? <laughs> that way. Uh, and then next we'll uh, just tip the oil out of this. And while we drain the oil, we just make sure that this little pin doesn't drop out of the end. Undo this locking nut. Take this uh, plastic slide off. So the next thing we need to do is take out that nut at the bottom. But when you turn that nut, what happens is in here, that bit down the bottom, there, right there, uh, just spins. So we need to hold that in place um, in order to undo the nut at the bottom. So to fit into that shape, um, what you can do is buy the special tool 
that uh, fits in there, which is basically a piece of pipe with some four little teeth on it. Um, but what else you can do is just use a bit of square tube. So this is 19 by 19, and I just got a file and just rounded off the corners. This is aluminium tube, um, just so nothing can get scratched in there. And uh, it fits, fits perfectly. So you just drop it down into there. Uh, I've got a ratchet on the, uh, put the, let's just show you. Got this on the bottom, which I'm just going to put my knee against so that it can't rotate. And then we're just going to unscrew that bolt at the bottom. Okay, should be able to take it out of the vise now and just undo that by hand without much effort. Okay, so you might have to give that a little bit of a push just to get this other, uh, rubber o-ring just to pop out of its seal. And then, ta-da, it comes out. And we're losing a little bit more oil here. Uh, and now, we should be able to take the inners right out of here. in there. Uh, now what we want to do is uh, remove our dust seal so just a screwdriver being careful not to scratch your um, fork. Should we be able to just yeah that comes off very easily. Then we've got a circlip in here which you need to get out. You can usually get a little screwdriver into that and just pop pop that out. Yep, pretty easy. Oh, it seems dirty. And then I believe we should be able to just give this a tug and our oil seal will come out. It is coming. Sorry, you're shaking around. <laughs> hey, there we go. So there's the fork seal, spacer, some bushes that oil. So we want to remove all of these parts. So really this bushing has got a split in it. So we should be able to just move it apart enough to, just to slide off the end. This one. Some spacer and our fork seal. Now this fork seal is uh, was leaking, believe it or not. Spring is pointing along the leg, so make sure we put the new ones back in in the same direction. Okay, so now we're ready to start putting everything back together with our new parts. So let's have a look at our new parts. Um, now, what do I got here? We come with a come to the tool and a book and some stickers. <laughs> Always with the stickers, eh? Um, yes. Important. Please read these precautions before installing the product. 
Now we are installing the, this is the left fork leg. I know this because it's got these little brackets for the um, ABS sensor. So this is the left fork leg. Um, also it's got the threaded hole in it so it's, that's on the left. So the left, so it says, you know, we recommend to install the rebound leg on the right side. Easier to remember, rebound right. <laughs> Well, okay, I guess that's all right if you, as long as you're English. Um, so really, it doesn't matter which side because um, these are split forks. Rebound on one fork, com um, compression uh, on the on the other. They both got springs, but it's the the damping force that is controlled in uh, individual legs. So this is also I'm using the. Um, so to work out which is. Now, what do we say? Rebound is on the right. So we want not rebound, okay? So you get your fork, um, you, you, sorry, your new cartridge. Uh, and you can just compress it. And this one springs back quickly, right? So this one is compression. It's dampening the compression force. The other fork... The other fork pushes in easy and then rebounds slowly. So this is the rebound fork. So rebound right, so we want compression left. Okay, so I'll leave the rebound in here. We're going to install the compression side first. Other than that action, there's no difference. The rest of the fork is exactly the same. So yeah, let's open this up. So what's... Uh, I guess there's advantages and disadvantages to closed cartridge uh, forks. Closed cartridge forks, this has all the oil and dampening and everything inside uh, with a gas cartridge, which means that there's no air voids in here whatsoever. Um, so the advantage is that the instant this starts moving, it's, it's doing its dampening function. Um, the disadvantage is that if you want to change the oil in here or um, do any sort of work in here, you need to take this to a shop uh, because we won't be opening this up at home. There's pressurized uh, nitrogen gas in here, so forget that part. Uh, the other thing I was going to just check before I put this back together. So, yeah, these springs, these are 6.8 uh, Newton, is that kilonewton meters? Newton millimeters. I think it's Newton millimeters. So, basically, it takes 6.8 uh, Newtons, which is a force, to compress this by a millimeter. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the old ones. Where's the old one? The original factory ones are... <laughs> they don't have a label. I don't know. If I find out what they are, I'll put them up here on the screen. So another advantage I thought, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but because we use 15 weight oil on the outside of here, your fork seals may be less likely to leak. Would that be a possibility? Because the oil is a lot thicker than normal fork oil or fork oil for an open cartridge setup anyway let's get this back together what else comes in the box so we've got our fork oil which we'll worry about later we have a a tool <laughs> am, I meant to, am I meant to be using this tool or is this just for adjustments so a little allen key a 4 mil allen key and a tractive uh, hex bit Okay, we'll find out what they're for later. Uh, I got some fork seals. Uh, and then bits, bits. Okay, these are our tops. So this is our compression top is the one we want so this one will be a rebound 
rebound top, which we'll use later. We also get a oh, Technic threw in a, a notepad. There you go. So the first thing that needs to go on is the dust seal. So this comes with a little manual also. Uh, these don't come in the kit, by the way. Uh, when you buy um, when you buy a cartridge kit, you don't get seals. They just, I guess, they expect that you can reuse your old seals. But mine were leaking, and we, I, I'd recommend changing them anyway. Okay, that's just telling you what order to put them in. So a little uh, trick here was to use a plastic bag. So the, the, this uh, little lip here can be quite sharp, and when you're putting your fork seal on, um, you can damage the rubber. Obviously that's very sensitive to damage. So you don't want the fork seal to uh, get torn on that. So you can put a plastic bag over the end. Only has to go far enough to get the seal and then and then we'll lub lubricate this up with a bit of fork oil and uh, slide on our parts. So dust seal. A clip. They can run all the way to the bottom. Then fork seal. Okay, just watch back my old video. <laughs> uh, the spring goes along the leg. We just, uh, yeah, just lubricate that. You want everything to be nice and slippery. Okay, so fork seal, then everything back as it was, a washer, this thing, then this thing. Nice! So this, uh, this bushing here needs to slot into its little housing at the, at the in the fork leg, but it it needs to be pushed in. It won't just drop in by itself. So, oh look at that! These were made up for my forty eight mil forks. I'm guessing off the sports bike. I don't know. Maybe they'll fit. Oh, there it goes. So yeah, you just need something like this is a bit of PVC cut in half, just to make sure that drops in there, and then you don't have to push on your um, fork seal as much. And that is it. So, obviously, the fork seals needs to push in so that you've got that little uh, lip 
for that to go into. So I'll put that together. If that even went in without a screwdriver, then a dust seal. There you go, we have a fork leg back together. Uh, so now that we're, I'm fairly confident that this is all going to go back together, <laughs> let's talk about the tools. A 14mm uh, hex, we'll need one of those. A 19mm uh, spanner, a 17mm spanner. Um, so this bit of PVC was... Yeah, 50 internal diameter bit of PVC. Um, so I, I've had these for many years um, from doing previous forks, but uh, yeah, that works. Uh, and this um, 19 by 19 by 1.2 mil uh, bit of aluminium tube, which is uh, your new special tool. And that's about it. Otherwise, just a general normal tools now, so also in our box of goodies over here we have a new nut so this old one with the valve on the bottom um, with the was that compression I think that was compression on the bottom of the fork leg right well we don't need that anymore that's now superseded because we have all of our adjustments at the top of the fork so this one is just a basically a bolt with a washer and an o-ring uh, it's got an o-ring so you should sort of grease all o-rings not grease you know just lubricate and you bolt bolts into the end bolts into the end of our cartridge now I think these spaces, because this spring is going to go onto here. Let me just double check these spaces. Okay, this uh, plastic spacer doesn't come off anyway so I'm going to assume that that needs to stay there okay so we're going to slide this into our fork leg and then put this bolt into the end Um, now it says to put a bit of thread lock on that. So we've greased our O-ring, um, a little bit of thread locker. I, I wouldn't be putting much on there. Make sure it's the removable one. Let's just show you in the end here. So you can see our thread. Should I see the inner bit that's that I can push up till it's right at the bottom and then that's the thread there maybe or maybe you can't see the thread on the camera so this bolt is going to go into that Okay, so next we want to put 120 mil of oil, well 100 mil of oil, a bit more or a bit less, whatever. <laughs> In here, let's go. 120. Okay, so now we're going to put in the spring.
Uh, and in the uh, fork cap is a couple of spaces. Um, so these are going to be your preload uh, adjustment. I might try it with one in there and we'll see how we go. Okay, so I think I'll put my preload cap on first. Get this spanner on, then we can use this one. Make sure this is, just make sure this is all the way out. How does that need to be? Okay, we do that up and then we tighten the bottom and we're doing that's a socket <laughs> it's not an allen key anymore So to uh, tighten this bolt to its final torque setting, I need to hold this end again. So I'll put it back on my bench and bolt it down again. Okay, 65. That is 65. So we are done. So there we go. One. Working fork. Seems to work. <laughs> so that's the uh, compression side. Um, we'll tweak the, all the settings once it's back on the bike. It's um, now time to do the rebound side.
settings are just on um, they're all on 10 clicks which is where they say to start and uh, just riding on the street <laughs> feels light years improvement um, yeah I'm starting to think well anyway I came up this road so I can hit some potholes and see how it feels so I've set my statics my free sag and my static sag and uh, they're about right um, it's a little bit stiff on the, the static sag but that's all right because I haven't got any luggage on um, Pretty good, man. So yeah, this was really just a little test ride to make sure I've put everything together correctly. And uh, hit a few bumps and see what happens. slippery <laughs> but the suspension oh, feeling good <laughs> someone's had their mini bike This suspension is oodles better. Even those little miniature whoops there. Oh. <laughs> Slippery. I mean, this is just slow speed stuff, right? <sighs> yeah, okay, I'm... I'm sold. I know, I haven't, like I said, I haven't even bloody tweaked... tweaked this yet. Uh, I don't want to get muddy. The thing is, I've both, I set them... Shit! Oh, slippery! I've set my damping and rebound both to 10 clicks out, which is where to start, but... But, like, what do I do from here? Because... It feels... No, that's great. Like, I would certainly have bottomed out the stock suspension through there. So I haven't changed the rear shock because I was reasonably happy with the rear shock. I'm, um, I'm pretty happy that I can get a good bit of air on this shock on the rear and uh, and, and it lands fine. <laughs> and really, to me, being the non... Oh, shit! <laughs> That's a log. And to me, being the non-suspension uh, guru that I am... Oh my god, that four-wheel drive... Completely destroyed this place. Now I just don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, the 10 clicks feels bloody near 
Well, it feels so much better than the stock suspension did that I don't know what to do. I guess I just need to go on some bigger rides. Um, a bit more high speed bumps and see what happens. Anyway, I'll get out of here, head back home, and uh, probably organise a ride for next weekend. Bang! Hit that! Bang! 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 Oh! Yeah, feels good. Oh, should have gone up there, bugger. Uh, so my buddy Charlie is uh, interested in suspension as well. So now that he hasn't done anything, he's got stock, and I've got this. We'll go for a ride back to back, uh, sort of swap bikes, and yeah, just get a good yeah side by side comparison. But I feel like this is a lot better. Of course, you always do when something's new, don't you? <laughs> uh.